I'll call the uh, uh, May 7th meeting of the Northampton License Commission to order. Um, uh, Commissioner Campadelli is expected shortly. Um, we, um, as always, uh, record this meeting. It is uh, being both audio and video recorded. Um, and uh, that's for the record. Um, I, we, our, our clerk has an announcement to make. Uh, just for full disclosure, under open meeting law, I'm Ariel Madura. I'm here to facilitate this meeting. I'm no longer the licensed commission clerk. Um, I'd like to introduce the new clerk, Cynthia Murphy, who will begin on May 19th in the mayor's office. Okay, and uh, thank you, Mary. Thank you for your service. Yes, thank you very much. We will miss you. <coughs> um, is this the last meeting you will facilitate? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, did I say that? <laughs> we'll see about that. Um, okay. Uh, at this time, um, as is always the custom, we call for any public comment uh, from any member of the um, public on any item uh, not on the agenda or any item on the agenda for that matter in advance of, of the uh, item being discussed. Is there any public comment at this time? Seeing none, um, I'll move on to uh, item five. And uh, I note that um, uh, we asked the licensee, Eric Seward, to be here regarding um, the status of two licenses he holds. And I note that he's not here. Um, I'm Jim. I'm from Iron Horse Entertainment. Eric's on his way from Holyoke. And okay. I, I'm here today just because I'm curious about what's happening. And I could probably answer some unofficial questions if you're curious, but he'll be here in about five minutes. I think we'll wait for the okay. licensee. Our, our questions are really for the licensee. It's okay. not about the um, operation of the Iron Horse. Right. This is. I, I have some information about that, too, that I wanted to add, though. When he gets here, we'll just wait. I guess okay. I'd like to. All right. All right. Sure. All right. Then uh, he is on his way, though. Yeah, he should be okay. here in five minutes. All right, thank you. All right, then um, we will uh, we will pass by that for now. Um, move on to item six, application for change of manager. This is the uh, Elks Lodge, uh, 17 Spring Street, uh, Florence. It's an annual all alcoholic club license. Proposed managers: Barbara Franklin, Mr. Barnsley, Ms. Franklin, I presume. Yes. Okay. Uh, why don't you come forward then? So um, uh, the current manager is who? Uh, uh, we had Mag Magdalena Strykars was the license holder, and mm -hmm. she resigned her position the end of January. I took over on January 27th. Okay. And I'm now the steward slash manager. Right. Uh, I see you submitted everything um, for change of manager here. Um, let me just ask you uh, your experience in uh, the service of alcohol, either in this state or elsewhere. I have been uh, working at the Elks Lodge for since I've been a member for 19 years, doing a back bar, soda bar, mm -hmm. um, small parties, beer and wine. I have taken tips many years ago. I've taken the Safe Serve. I just renewed my Safe Serve. I have the Safe Serve alcohol and the Safe Serve food and have been uh, actively a, a bartender at the lodge. How many people uh, will you be supervising in the service of food and alcohol at the place? There will be uh, any, anywhere from five to ten. We right now have four bartenders. Mm -hmm. Have you supervised at, at the Elks before, or this is your first supervisory role? I've been the secretary and been an officer for most of the 19 years that I've been a member, so in a way, yes, I've been supervising and guiding. Okay. Uh, any questions? I'm just wondering how much do you plan to be on the premises as a manager? Uh, I'm right that right now I'm there at least six days a week and uh, most of the time the seventh day when I need to be at least a minimum of 40 hours a week but then I do also 20 hours of volunteer so I'm there anywhere from 60, wow. 60 to 70 hours a week. Okay. <laughs> that's quite a few hours. Okay. Yes. Uh, that's the only question I have. Uh, okay. um, I'll make a motion that we approve uh, your application for the change of manager. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Um, I think I just saw Commissioner Campidelli. Also, Mr. Stewart came in. Okay. So maybe we should just wait for okay. Commissioner well, Campidelli. Okay. Let's just take a breather for a second. <clears throat> So let me, let me uh, continue then, because I think this is uh, something we've done before as routine. So let me take the next item on the agenda. Application for short-term wine and malt liquor license event, Arts Night Out. Um, I see that we have uh, a variety of, of establishments. It's just a list uh, similar or uh, substantially similar to the list before. It is. Pretty much. I mean, there are a few new ones, and some people off, but this is, I think, I think it's the third time that we've made uh -huh. this application. Okay. And uh, that is for um, all those Fridays. Second Friday. Second Friday. Second Friday of every month. Of every month okay. through uh, through May of 2015. Correct. Okay. Right. And I note that. Um, we have everything we need, including a check for the one uh, fee, uh, one aggregate fee for $61. Uh, right. I have no other questions. Um, I don't have any questions either. I think this is pretty much what it was before. It is. It hasn't changed. And we appreciate it. Thank you. Good, good evening. Thank you. For the past uh, three years that you've done this, you have uh, allow them to waive server information and insurance information and pay one group fee of $61 for mm -hmm. the whole group. Do you have other questions? I don't have any. I have any here most of it. Okay, well then I'll make a motion that we approve the application for Arts Night Out short-term wine and malt license starting next month and going through May of 2015. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Right. Um, let me now return then to item number five. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Sewer. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, we uh, Note that the green room, uh, the license that you hold at 2628 Center Street is still not open. Mm -hmm. And um, the uh, commission had asked you to uh, to open by the end of January. And you assured us that it would be able to open then. Uh, subsequent to that, uh, you said that it would open when the April 1st right. change to seasonal would come. It's still not open there. Uh, it did, didn't open there. Um, the um, the place has not been in operation, the license hasn't been in operation. Apparently members of the public haven't been in there from what, you know, all from what looks like outside. And uh, I also understand that you did not apply for a food service establishment permit either, which you would need not only to serve food, but also to serve alcohol at this thing. So you don't have an application, so the thing is, is not open and it's now been... We just found out that we needed the, the food application. But I can answer your previous question. But the the food service director will, uh, the health director will come and do an inspection where everything is permitted, and everything's been permitted. So it's just a formality, which obviously I have to we have to submit the the, the license but the, for the license. But it's right. But you I can't mean, operate it's, it's without a, one, and which is if, and yeah. it raises the question of if you had intended to operate this. Absolutely. Earlier, you would have applied for the food no, service that, establishment. Yes, that, the Perfect. food service establishment was an oversight, and I mean we have a number of establishments and a number of licenses, and that that was an oversight. We fully intend to have that license um, and have that application in. I mean we're delayed from the April first opening, but we are just about there. The space is almost 100 percent complete. Um, you know, there's certain delays that have happened that were outside of outside of our ability to, to open for April 1, but 
you know, no different than several other establishments in town that had planned on opening for a specific date and were delayed. But we are, I mean, we are almost 100% there at this point. Well, let me note um, for, um, for purposes of this discussion, uh, first of all, uh, there are three things that a licensee can do with a uh, uh, license to serve alcohol in, the, in this town or any other town um, in the Commonwealth, is they can operate the license, they can uh, be engaged in the service of alcohol, uh, they can um, they can transfer the license to somebody else, um, and uh, they can um, uh, they can uh, surrender the license. Mm -hmm. um, usually, people when they can't open, um, there's there's complications. Uh, from my experience have chosen to sell the license to somebody. But you're in another category. You've had this license, and you haven't exercised it. You haven't given it back to the city. Right. And you haven't sold it to anybody else. Um, and again, I know we went through this before, but we have a uh, uh, we have a, an opinion. Well, we have a, we have a memo from the ABCC that says that pocket licenses are not allowed per uh, Mass General Laws Chapter 138.77, Section 77. Commission may cancel the license of any license holder who ceases to conduct the license business. That is, any license holder who closes the business or stops doing business. Mm -hmm. We further have an opinion dated October 15th last year from our city solicitor that says that um, uh, the, uh, the provision of Section 77 would clearly apply to this. So relying on relying on that, we um, we have uh, we have a recommendation here that we consider this a pocket license um, and there, thereby in, in violation of 138 section 77. Um, the place clearly hasn't been open. Mm -hmm. um, in March, I think it was, you said that, well, you had a few people in, but right. it so has been open. You haven't been able to open it. Hasn't been open. Gotta, no, you know, it, hasn't opened on a, it has not been opened on a regular basis. We had people in during bad weather. We opened the establishment, but it hasn't been ready. It is ready, just about finished. But, but, but it, it has been open for the service of food I'm, and alcohol. I'm not, I'm not denying that, but we, we are, very close to being open, so I don't consider it at this point a pocket license. And we just ask, as you worked with me through this entire point, the space has been fully permitted by everybody other than the food license set was a complete oversight. And all of the fixtures are there. The last thing that we're doing is hanging pictures on the wall, and you know, there's a new sign going up. It's not, it, it's not like it is months away, but we need to do it right. We intend to be around for years and years, similar to my adjacent establishment, but just celebrated 35 years. It's not, you know, I can't operate at the whim of, of the newspapers and their articles, and I, I fully respect and understand the commission here, but we also intend to have a place that's going to be successful, and it's going to be around for years for the public to enjoy. It's going to be a good employer in town, as our other establishments are. So it's not like we're sitting here and going to be back in front of you six months from now, that it is imminent in terms of when we're going to open. We're scheduling for a formal open house, which we haven't done yet because we're waiting on custom fixtures that are supposed to be in within the next week. There's certain things we could just open the doors, but it's not, it isn't finished the way we want it to be finished. And so, you know, it's, uh, there, there are certain delays. Look, the platform was delayed by four months. They were supposed to open February 1, and not that it's a license commission situation, but there's certain things that come up, and, you know, certain things that are within our control and some things that aren't. So we're very, very close. It's not, um, you know, I don't, I don't feel I should, uh, you know, I'm not looking to beg, but I'm also a asking for your understanding that it, it, if it were one thing was here, right, saying we hadn't done any work. I mean, we've poured a ton of money into the place. It's it's looking terrific. People are going to enjoy it, and you know, again, it, it's it's not like it's six months away. I mean, it's more than likely a few weeks before everything is 100 percent where we can get in there. Our menu's finished. Some of the staff has been trained. It's not, you know, it's it's not like I'm standing up here saying we haven't done anything. You know, the building inspector's office will tell you that all the inspections were done, the fire department's been through, everybody's been through, and so, you know, all of that stuff is, is up, all the permits are finished. No, we're aware of that, yeah, yeah. sure. Um, um, One thing that, that has to happen is that the health, which we which we did complete complete oversight, and all my other permits are current, and, and a signed permit, which will be into the building inspector's office tomorrow, so you can put the new sign up. And those are really the, the only two things that are that are left hanging. And, and it was a complete oversight. I'm fully aware of the Board of Health. We, we, always submit 
all of our licenses um, in, a, in a timely manner on that. So that and that is five minutes to deliver that to the office, and then scheduling with with the inspector who is is typically very um, you know very good about scheduling um, in terms of taking a walkthrough in the place. Everybody else has been through. Everything is up to code. Um, everything is brand new. There's, you know, so I don't suspect there's going to be any issues in terms of the Board of Health's inspection. All right. Well, that being said, let me just, um, I'll, I'll say a few things here, and then <coughs> I'd like to ask, uh, not to monopolize and ask my fellow commissioners if they have any questions for you. But let me just um, uh, note that the, um, that the, that the, uh, the case we have before us is, you know, is clear as regards to pocket licenses. Now, you uh, have said, and I've, I've actually agreed with you before in this in this meeting, that you're, uh, you've made a great contribution to the city, that all your other establishments are well run. It's an enormous cultural contribution to the city. There has no, been no problem with any with the service of alcohol or food. Uh, really, they are, they are, they are uh, great additions to the business and entertainment. Uh, uh, scene of, of Northampton, and there's no problem there. We don't doubt that if you open this place, that it would be first rate. Mm -hmm. It would be great. Um, so that's not an issue here. Um, but uh, let me just go back here and uh, review. You you got this license um, uh, back in 2000. I'm, I'm aware of the, I'm aware of the history better than anybody, so I'm not knocking that. All I'm saying is but we're in the meeting ready to open. All right. of this is, is on the record. You've been through this, right. the meeting in December. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, March, but we're, we're so close to opening, Bill. I just, all I'm asking for is just an understanding that, I mean, it's not a pocket license at this point. We just need to have the formal opening so that we can hang the open shingle, everything is set. It's not like I'm here in front of you saying, I need another six months. I understand everything that was done. I understand Attorney Seawald's uh, description of, of what is a pocket license. I mean, we've been through, that, that, was, that was months ago. So let and, me, let me, let me. And the me. license, just so you know, we didn't get the license. It's not like it's been six months. The license was seasonal. We are gonna convert, which that paperwork will go in. There's time on that until, until the, the change of seasons in terms of the, the winter months. But the, the license was for April 1, so the soonest we would have had alcohol service was one month ago. Um, that was, you know, that I, when I was here at the March meeting, we had that discussion, because you had thought that it was, that, that the operation was through the winter when that license didn't come until April. So I'm not trying to be argumentative, I'm just trying to state the facts, and all we do, we just, we just need time to make this right. We're going to be around for many, many years. It's not, it isn't like I'm going to open, I didn't want to open just for the sake of pleasing the newspapers and the license commission and then having to close to wait for some of the things to come in. It's a few weeks. It's, you know, we just want to make sure it's done right. Everything else we've done in town has been done right. Let me, let me, let me stop you right there, if I may. I'd just like to explain um, for the record why, um, you know, why this taxes my credulity. Because the, uh, on the March 7th, 2012 meeting, um, you were hopeful to have the property operational by late fall or early winter. That was March of 2012. The October 2012 meeting, uh, there's ongoing work at both locations. Uh, we've already uh, discovered from the building commission there was no ongoing work at that time. You'll note that we, a, lot of the, a lot of what was not done was because of what was happening in the neighborhood at the time with the city, with the police department, etc. So that, a lot, well, allow me, allow me to, to conclude this. You said at the October 3rd, 2012 meeting that you would have firm dates of opening by March 2013. Um, March 2013 uh, came and went as well. Um, the, um, um, and, and at the time, actually backing up to March 7th, uh, then Commissioner Schimmel advised you that this license could be considered a pocket license if the license wasn't, ex if wasn't exercised in, in a reasonable amount of time. So following on the October 2012 meeting, the June 2013 meeting, um, we again noted the ABCC guideline regarding pocket license, pocket licenses. We, you said uh, you noted the delay then as you are uh, noting it now. And um, 
you said then it may open in early fall 2013. And uh, we noted at that time that the annual license come up for renewal in 2013 and understood you would be asked your intentions at that time. In November 2013, we did have a copy of this opinion from, uh, from the city solicitor then. And we, um, at that time, um, you know, the, the work had finally begun just between the time of this opinion being sent to us and the meeting on November 6th, there was work. Uh, the building commissioner came through and other sorts of people. Right, we received but, a permit at that, at that right. at that point. Shortly after that point, we received the, the building mm -hmm. permit. Okay. Um, and work's commenced. I mean, we, we did everything that we said we were going to do, except we're just late on the opening then. The, the previous stuff that that was discussed I, is understood, sorry, but let, 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 from that let, meeting let forward, we've, we've gotten the space finished. The, um, there's been, um, I, I understand there's, there's, there's problems in renovating the space and getting open, but in the eight years that you've held this license, many places have come and gone and come again at the mm -hmm. same venue. Uh, I recall that uh, the license that was transferred from the old Spoleto to that Irish pub, you know, they had to renovate a movie theater and they seemed to get it operational. So I don't pretend to know that, but it just seems to me to be uh, a long, long time that this thing has been coming. And we have had received repeated assurances and dates. Oh, this is going to be open here. This is going to be open here. I, if I were in a business uh, that relied on people to, you know, to supply certain things, and somebody kept saying to me, I'm going to have this, this for you in three months. I'm going to have it for you next month. I'm sorry I didn't make last month. I'm going to have it for you in three months. After a while, I would look for other remedies. I wouldn't rely on that vendor or whoever to supply what I needed because repeatedly failed to, failed to keep um, you know, his promises, failed to keep, meet the deadlines that were set. In this case, we're operating not as a business, but as a as the duly as the local licensing authority here, under the laws which govern the issuance of liquor licenses in the Commonwealth, and it's clear to us that we have an obligation, as the licensing authority, to enforce the regulations. And there's been an awful lot of time here that has elapsed, and we've given you an awful lot of time. And part of the reason why you've had so much latitude, I think, is because your places are great. You've been an exemplary license holder. There's no question about that. And you know, some somebody else, you know, I don't know. I can't say that. But we really do have to enforce the uh, regulations um, equally. If we did not enforce this, uh, we could not uh, keep enforcing the regulations generally in the city. So, you know, that being said, uh, I think you know where. I what I'm getting at here. Uh, but at this point, I would like to um, ask if uh, uh, the other commissioners have questions for Mr. Seward. Well, I, I'll, I, I'm not sure where my question is in this, but I'll start by making an observation, and maybe the question will become apparent to me as I go further. <clears throat> um, I, I think we're in a difficult moment because now, after all this time has elapsed, it begins to feel like, oh, like you see, we're almost there. Like, it, but at some point, we're going to come back, say next month, and up, oh, it isn't quite finished, and then it's too late. So, I sort of feel like we have begun to reach the point where something has to change, and. Why don't you just give it a formal open? I mean, we have a formal opening date that we're scheduling, which I think would probably make it such that it's just done. And in other words, I can open in a half, you know, what manner, which we've chosen not to do. But we have a date where we know everything is going to be set to open, and so I can do that, or I can run over there and I can flip the switch with the Board of Health uh, certificate tomorrow and and open up to satisfy what you're saying. But I would rather open up when everything is completed, which we have a first week of. We're looking at two or three dates for a formal ribbon cutting in the first week of June, and that's what I would prefer to do. There's no, 
coming back to you where it's not going to be open. Everything other than the oversight on the Board of Health piece in terms of us being able to open is in place and able to be done. So if it, if it means me just giving the License Commission a formal letter with a formal date to open, I'm prepared to do that. Because everything is finished there. Believe me, we're not spending the money that we've spent in the establishment to not open the establishment. There's delays that happen. I fully respect what you're saying in terms of the, the license chair. I understand, and, and, and frankly, when we were given 60 days, which brought it to January 1, uh, where the license wasn't, wasn't in effect until April 1, it was still, which, which we knew was gonna be tight. We did, the city cooperated terrifically with us in terms of the building inspector's office, but some other things just couldn't get completed. We got the majority of everything finished before I came in front of you the last time, but we're, we're very close to being done, so I'm happy to present you a formal date in terms of which we'd be open, and 100% ready to open. I mean, the space is complete. It's not, you know, with the exception of some fixtures, which we can open without, there's nothing that we're lacking there except for the Board of Health, uh, the Board of Health Certificate. So I'm comfortable in presenting that to you, and then it's completely on, on my shoulders if for whatever reason we don't open, which I can tell you won't be the case. I mean, we are fully prepared to turn the key on the doors for a formal opening. Well, I guess in a way, what you said, the last thing you said, begins to intersect with where I was thinking, and I'm still not completely clear on what makes the most sense. I'd be curious maybe to hear what our legal <coughs> counsel has to say. But if we were to take action today uh, to acknowledge that this has, in fact, been a pocket license up until this point, what would have to happen in order for there to actually be a surrender of the license. I assume it wouldn't happen as of this afternoon. We, would, we, we, we as a commission would have to um, move and uh, approve a motion to, um, to take this license back uh, for cause. And in this case, cause uh, is uh, Chapter 138, Section 77, failure to exercise the license. So upon our motion, and acceptance of the motion to take back the license for cause, then the licensee would have to turn it into the city, and that would be that. Um, it could be uh, issued to somebody else, because I understand that these are uh, those types of things. But anyway, uh, do you, that's, that's what I know now. Do you want to ask a question of, of, of counsel? Well, would there have to be further action, or? No. Would, uh, or uh, you know, my position on this, and this is purely within the, the uh, Commission's discretion, uh, there's no question in my mind that this is and has been a pocket license since it was issued in 2009. Um, the, uh, the applicant is, was given a deadline that last fall of January 31st. He didn't meet that deadline. He hasn't met any deadline that he has represented this Commission that he would meet. Um, he's offering you another deadline. And the commission can accept it, but the commission can cancel the license. Those are the two uh, the two um, options open to the uh, to the commission. If in fact the commission were to decide to cancel the license, the applicant or the, the license holder would have the right to appeal that to the ADCC, who would uh, make its own decision. And um, but you know, there's uh, you know, I will say that this is a um, a somewhat shocking record of uh, stringing this commission along. Well, I think in a way you answered my question, uh, which I didn't articulate very clearly, but um, it puts the burden on the licensee's shoulder if we were to make that decision. The that, decision to cancel? Yes. It would, sh it, wouldn't, it would shift the burden to his shoulders to do something affirmatively if you were interested in I'm not sure I understand. No, we, we ask him to turn in the license. He has to turn yeah. the license. No, I understand. But he's saying if he wants to, he can appeal and make his case. You know. Oh, yeah. Anything we do is appeal. So, anything uh, you do is appeal. Well, there's no such thing as a, a, uh, a local decision right. of this kind that's not appealable under some mandamus, I mean, um, certiorari, or by statutory appeal process. And the statutory appeal process in, chapter, in section 77 is the ADCC. I mean, we'd rather not have to appeal. We'd rather just, just be able to just open and have you understand that, you know, delays are a part of some of this. And, and you know, um, 
I'm, I'm not disagreeing with some of what was discussed, but I am also, you know, letting you know, and it's in the record somewhere that we had all, we had at one point called the ABCC, which was at one of the meetings when, when we were first told that the commission was concerned that this was a pocket license, and we were given additional information from the ABCC regarding it having an address and regarding the fact that there was an address that was going to house the license. That was a record that we had no, discussed you, here. So. You brought up that yeah, point and before, so, so that got, would be the basis of your appeal to ABCC. No, we're not going to. We're not going to want. I mean, hopefully, we're not going to have to appeal. I mean, the, the the issue was when it was brought to our attention with the previous meetings where we were given the ultimatum. That's when we, you know, we obviously were moving the project forward. It wasn't like we're going to sit there forever with the vacant space. But the space is the space is done. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll turn so. the floor back over to Commissioner Levin. But just let me note that the first time that we brought up the. The phrase pocket license was at the March 7, 2012 meeting. Right. That's now um, over 24 mm -hmm. months ago. Right. Anyway, I'm sorry, I continue. Sir. Well, I'm not about to make a motion yet because I want to hear from uh, the third commissioner, but I think I have made clear that I feel the time has come for some action to be taken so that we don't find ourselves in the same position a month from now. Oh, that's where I'm coming from. Commissioner Campidelli? Yeah. <clears throat> Mary, um, somewhere in the minutes would we be able to find out at one of these past meetings uh, if we gave an ultimatum, like if you don't open by this date, that's it, you're done, we're taking it? Because that's what I'd like to see. And I know that you talked about record leeway, but I also know that you brought that up about um, the owner of Spoleto, Claudio, had five, was it five plus years that he was given when that place burned? Well, we bought some other things too. Well, but we purchased one of the clear. licenses that was, a, I think it was longer than that. But when, when Bill brought up the fact that to the, the first record was March 2012, when the, when the pocket license language came up, was when we contacted the ABCC because it was news to us based on the, some previous licenses in town as well as the license having an address. It wasn't the, the, in the day, a pocket license was typically a license where someone had sold an establishment and they didn't have an address where a license was going. We knew that we were developing this address for this license. There was no intent to have this license traded or sold. It was just taking a longer period of time. And, and during that period of time, the police department was under construction and the road was a mess and it was just impossible. Once the commission sent us notification of the intent is when we came in front of you, we pulled the building permits and we're just asking for, at this point, a little that. bit more time to just point, get us open. That's it. I guess my point is, the, as far as I'm concerned, the leeway and all that, that doesn't mean anything to me right. because it's happened before. Right. If there's a true and definite ultimatum by hit this date mm -hmm. or we're taking it, right. then that's something different. That's right. clear as a bell. And then I guess your only other option is. Mm -hmm. if, if, um, I may, if I may, yeah. Commissioner, the uh, November 6th. Um, the, uh, the commission voted. The commission voted to require the premises 26 to 28 Center Street to be in operation by January 6, 2014. I recall being here at that meeting, and that was the drop dead date. Okay. Well, what was the? Is there a written ultimatum on it that says we're going to take the license otherwise, or? Well, I think that's, that's that was we have discussed in the context of, of Alan's memo, yeah. Alan's letter regarding the finding that this would be a pot. Yeah. It would be within our rights as a commission. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, so I also but, addressed but I mean, it at the March meeting because the license was the license was the seasonal license, which wasn't understood at the time in terms of some of the discussion, and that license came to us, came back to us for April one. So I'm not knocking what was written there, so but um, it was an April one license. Where do you see that date? got to be in operation by when? January 6th. Okay, so we need to be in operation by January 6th, but then yet you came before us again? I was in front of you and yeah, yeah remark. I explained that it wasn't. Even and, though and, you weren't in operation January 6th, we yes. gave you leeway? Well, the license did, yes, the license, it was misunderstood that the license in Mary qualified, I believe, that question, but like, that it was a seasonal license and that we weren't Understand. getting the license until That's fine. April 1. So it's not a here nor there, but that what was. What it's tied to doesn't matter. I want right. to know if just trying to get to the logical part. Yes, I was in front of the license commission after the January 6th. Gave more leeway is what I'm asking. Yes. After the January 6th date. Yes. Well, I, I said we were going to be open. Uh, at that point, we were opening somewhere in the first week of April. What was what was expected that we were going to do? We're we're a little late. I mean, that's really and truly what it is. Everything is done. 
Um, it's not like I have an empty space. Everything is done. My point is, is if you came in after the January 6th, I didn't yes. take it then. Right. And I would have and been we in. didn't take it then right, when right. we said we were going to. Right. I would have been in last month as well. Trying to figure out where the where this bag holds. Just so the commission's aware, I would have been in last month, and I I did not receive, which I always receive notices of the meeting. So I had assumed it was the following Wednesday. I would have been in front of the commission at last month's meeting as well. It was the first time I've not received a, a meeting okay. notice in all the years. So let me I've just finish my point. So January 6th came and went. You came before us. We let you go until, what was the next date we said we were going to be open? Early April. Well, there early was April. a date. I had mentioned that we would be okay. open in early, early April based on our expectations. My point is, it's written here, and we let it go. So it means that this means this date means nothing to me, mm -hmm. is what that, because we gave you the leeway. So, I mean, I, I don't know. The point being with that, if we didn't take it then, we didn't take it, you know, after the last eight years, and you're this close. I mean, it's my opinion. We're less than a month from a very I'm just wondering, if we do something out that said, listen, you know, you're trying to tell us now, because this is what it seems to be, is there's just really no ultimatum that's actually being held, because we keep giving a chance and giving a chance. So, if this board decided to give you what is it? Two weeks? You said that you yeah. need. I mean, first, now you're first, out, you're asking for June. June twelfth. Well, we which have, I mean, if you. If what you, was the formal? June twelfth. We're looking at. We have a formal ribbon cutting. We can open before then. Yeah. But we have a formal ribbon cutting. We're scheduling based on schedules for June twelfth. So, not even my. So, say there's no date there at all. But if we said to him, "Hey, listen, you need to be up and running. That's it. How long would it take to get that other license that he has to have? For, just until next month, right? He has to mm -hmm. apply." He's your, they're, they're pretty quick. Anyway, and so. would that stop him anyway? I mean, I don't, I don't know. So I'm just trying to bring up possibilities. I mean, isn't this what, what we're here for, right? To discuss all avenues and possibilities. Sure. And, and any other questions that you want to ask of a licensee? Uh, right. I think the food service permit, Mary, is just a submission. That doesn't have to go in front of the board. It's just a submission to the health okay. department. And that's usually pretty quick. I mean, it's usually very quick. Every time we've done that in the past, they schedule it usually within a day or two. Well, I don't know. If you're saying you can open now, then my suggestion is you open now. Mm -hmm. You know, formal or not. Right. I mean, what is this? What What is the venue? It's I a mean, It's a very simple. Uh, it's, it's two doors down from the Iron Horse. It's a okay. fully built-out bar called the Green Room. That's just a comfortable craft cocktail bar. Right. So we're very straightforward. Right I mean, what's formal about the yeah. opening? We're going to open before the formal opening, but we're having a formal ribbon cutting to do the right thing with the press and everything else for that date. But we can open before that. Yeah, I mean, have you have the license in, in hand. Why is it not open? I mean, can we run we'd down like there to do after it. Here We'd like to have it done properly. Celebrate proper. an opening? Yeah. I, mean, I, don't, yes. I don't understand what the hold up is. So, I mean, you know, we could have, we could have, if you want to have a date, two weeks from now where there's an opening where we announce to you guys formally that it's open. We're easily able to do that without any issue. And then we'll have and our formal opening for June. If we take the avenue and take the license, he's going to appeal. And it's going to be an ongoing process anyway, which is going to give him time to open under that next form. Uh, no, and can you the open license, with the, no, the license? Will, would be <coughs> surrendered to the city. He, I would, he would be able to open for the service of alcohol. Okay. Uh, he could open for the service of food if the license were. If if we do move to uh, to to uh, take back the license under the terms of Section 77. He couldn't serve alcohol. I see. And that's all we're we're really concerned with here. Right. If he proceeds to uh, open something for the service of food, that's between him and the health department. <clears throat> well, we can open for alcohol service prior to the formal uh, ribbon cutting without any issue. Let let me just point out before we conclude this discussion because even though there are two separate licenses, I think the course of action sheds some light, you know, back and forth. There is another license that's also been, uh, you know, held as what is increasingly a pocket license. That is the Old Baptist Church. And I don't know. Do we want to hear about that before we make a final decision? No, or I'd like to you want deal, to do them each separately. I would like to deal with the license uh, at 2628 Center Street. And okay. We can proceed to discuss the license at uh, 298 Main Street after that. Th that makes sense to me. The only thing I want to say is that I remember distinctly discussing the fact that that venue um, had a lot of complications from a you know, construction point of view, whereas the <coughs> Center Street venue was very straightforward, and that's why it, the delay in the Center Street venue to me seems even more 
egregious. Um, I, I have to say, well, I, I don't know if there's more discussion on well, letting me make a motion. Well, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, but we, we, yeah, we don't have a motion yet. Uh, the purpose of this was to, for you to ask the licensee any questions. But, uh, yeah, I don't have any other questions. Well, I have one, uh, one point. Uh, you brought up the fact that it was a seasonal, mm -hmm. that it is a seasonal license, right. and that um, when, Jan when January came and went, mm -hmm. you know, well, you couldn't open the service alcohol season. Yeah. However, um, you had intended and told us, mm -hmm. th this commission of your intent, to convert this under the terms of the special and act. Still, yes, still to do it. that, yeah. you could have given our thing, you, your, the seasonal nature of this license was no bar to you applying here for conversion from seasonal to annual paying the extra fee, and having that thing be ready to go in January. So this was not a, this was not a traditional yeah. seasonal license. Right. This was always, and it, you know, you had intended always, according to your statements yeah. to us, to convert this. You could have converted this any time. So the, the issue that, well, it was a seasonal license, we couldn't do anything until April, right. doesn't, doesn't uh, convince me that you were unable to meet the deadline. You could have converted this at any time. Right, and we did check, though, and the, the conversion time from what our discussion was would have been, and, and also a, a fairly substantial chunk of money that would have had to have been paid in. The decision was made based on the time that that conversion would have actually happened, which may have even potentially been later than the April 1 date. So the full intention is to get paperwork filed so that not in September, October, but shortly so that we're able to have the license converted so that next year we're not closed because we don't want to be closed for for the three plus months yeah, that the license doesn't seem to me to be a good business model yeah. to be closed season yes. which which begs the question you know you could have done it you could have paid but you know i yes. I, I don't know your business model yeah. but yeah the time this thing will always had the had the option of being open for the service of alcohol on our deadline of january so the fact that it was a seasonal license doesn't really um, wasn't wasn't a bar to your opening. Then. Right. It, I, I answered that as best I could answer no, I, it. But I at know. the time, know. We, know, at the time we looked at it in terms of conversion, because we were dealing with all the construction and all of the other issues at that time, based on what we were told in terms of how long it might take, the decision was made, and we were already midway through, uh, you know, the winter at that point that we were going to convert it at some point by summer. So I have a question then. Ready to convert now? Yeah, I mean, I was planning on getting. I mean, based so, on the amount, we're told it's going to take six weeks. And Mary, you can probably tell me whether that's legit or not. But that's that's what we were being told in terms of the time, depending upon what the ABCC has for backlog. But that's the extended time. So, I mean, we intend to convert it. Yes. I mean, I don't know. I, I think if that was the case, then I would say that you have. My whole issue was here is that the January six came and went, mm -hmm. and we didn't do anything. So I feel. It's my opinion. I can't, um, on the basis of that, we're not going to do it. And when do we? You know what I mean? So I'm not going to... I'm just asking for you to let me get open in a couple so weeks. So my point is, if, if if this board does decide to say, yeah, you're going to open in two weeks, mm -hmm. and you're also going to convert at the same time, mm -hmm. you know, and get it done. Right. I mean, that's right. my opinion, but... I just want to point out that obviously didn't, uh, didn't need to get the conversion completed before operating the seasonal license. He could have no, that's applied, well, that's, that's applied for the the annual and operated under the seasonal when April first came if it wasn't done. Yes, of course. Um, I, go ahead. Go ahead you know, I, I, as I said, it, it's an awkward situation in in a, in a situation like this because <laughs> the longer something drags out, you know, in a certain way, the more someone can say, well, you know, it's just a little bit more time. But at some point, you know, you do have to draw a line. And I do think the point has come because I think it has been crystal clear that we expected something done by last meeting, if not this meeting. And so um, <clears throat> I am prepared to, yes, I am prepared to make a motion that the license for 2628 Center Street should be surrendered because it has been held as a pocket license. I will second that uh, discussion. I don't agree. Well, <coughs> so. I mean, tell, well, tell, tell us. 
I have trouble with the January 6th date coming and going and not doing anything about it. I'm giving him more leeway. And how can you draw the line now? I mean, the guy's close. He's two weeks away or less. You know? I mean, according to, what is it, brown paper on the windows? Well, we put, I mean, the newspaper wrote that the place is boarded up. It's up. The, the, no, the, the logos are on the window. There. The place is finished. What inside. I'm trying to ask you, is there or not? So is it just a matter of ripping it down, cleaning the windows, and opening the doors? Yeah, the, the interior is finished. He can't, uh, he doesn't have a house permit. Yeah, but that'll take, yeah. if, if, if you're willing to understand and cooperate with regard to a short period of time and stipulate, if you want even a date to stipulate, then we're going to comply. We're obviously not looking to get into a fight uh, with, with you or the ABCC when we're so close to getting this finished. So all we're asking for is if you tell me you need the key turn and you have to open, we're hearing it loud and clear. We heard it loud and clear, but there were some issues. I missed the last meeting because we weren't notified of the meeting. Eric, and Eric, I'm, I'm and sorry, are just, you know, okay. we're capable of, of doing what needs to be done to get open. You made those points before. I'm sorry to cut you off, but at this point we're discussing the motion, having a discussion of the motion here among ourselves. So I appreciate your patience with that. Um, Brian, anything else further? Um, like to say against this motion before we take a vote? I think I've made that loud and clear. Okay, so Stephanie? Kind of... No, I mean, I hear what you're saying, but I think, as I said, it has to come up on it that you draw a line. And we I sure have been more answer. than, we have, <laughs> but the fact that we've been generous in the past doesn't it seem to me I understand, but you know what's dictate that we continue to do that and continue to see this drag on and drag on. I guess my point is he's got a valid point. So can I just ask uh, Stephanie and Bill, I mean, obviously, can I just, if, if we say we're looking for just to formalize opening before a ribbon cutting, can we ask you to just give me two weeks and just open it? Just put a date on it, and, I'll, and it's going to be open, rather than having to fight this where it's going to cost me legal money, the city legal money, because we'll contest it, and I'm not threatening, I'm just asking. Just give us two weeks. I mean, that's all I'm asking. We're going to open. It's ready to go if you want to walk over and see the interior now. That's all, all I'm asking. Okay, we're going to continue discussion here of, of the motion. Um, again, this, um, I, I, I mentioned before that a, um, you know, a, a business that had received repeated assurances from a vendor that they would have something would stop, you know, we'd look for other remedies after a while. And a, um, you know, a regulatory body or a license, uh, local authority like this also has to look for remedies after so many times of being told it will open, it will open, it will open. We were given dates um, and the discussion of the, um, of, the, of the deadline in January was couched in, in, in the terms of this memo. This memo wasn't the first time, as we've all noted so far, that the possibility this would be considered a pocket license to come up. So it was clear that the deadline um, was um, attached to a sanction. And the sanction would be that we would have to, because of our uh, uh, obligation as uh, commissioners here for the local licensing authority, to act on you know, the, both the opinion of the ABCC and the, and the, the wording of Chapter 138, Section 77, and cancel this license. Um, and, and again, it gives me no pleasure to do this. It's not this is this is not something I would want to do. I'm sorry I came to this point. You again, I'll say it one more time. You're an exemplary license licensee. Uh, your establishments are a great resource to the city. It's just for some reason this this one has stayed out of operation all these years. And as, in the words of counsel, it, it appears to the public, because uh, some of the public has talked to me about this, that you have been stringing this body along. And, you know, uh, that isn't I would, the case. So, I would, can I, can I, I ask would, you a question? Bill, is it, can we be given the opportunity to tomorrow file my application with the health board as that was an oversight? I would assume that so long as his schedule is such, he'd be able to get me the we permit necessary. And we'll open so that we can be we open and not have to be fighting about this any further. And then we're just open and everybody's satisfied. There's no need to take it because we can open as soon as we have that formality out of the way. We we're prepared a, we to open. Right but I'm asking, I'm asking for, for you to, to, to 
to rethink where you were going with it so that you'll give me the opportunity to fill out, which is five minutes, to go in tomorrow morning to see if he can get me the certificate because we're fully ready to go, and then we can open. It might take him a day or I don't know what the schedule is there, but that's all I'm asking. That's going to avoid a lot of unnecessary back and forth and avoid a lot of unnecessary costs in terms of our end and the city end. That's all I'm asking. Understood. Um, we're ready to do it. All right. We have a, a motion which has been seconded on the floor. Uh, if there's no further discussion of the motion, um, uh, I would ask for a vote. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Say nay. Nay. <laughs> okay. So in other words, you're not going to allow a day to get a certificate from downstairs to the Board of Health to open it. There's no other motion that can be put forth to allow that to happen. We have voted to uh, cancel this license. Um, is there anything here to what the licensee is saying about this? He, his only recourse now is to appeal to the ABCC? Appeal to the ABCC. Okay. That's, that's what it is. And again, it gives me no pleasure to do this. It but seems it to is. be giving you plenty of pleasure. I mean, I, you know, because all you had to do was have a motion to allow it. Because now there's going to be an ex it's, it's going to be beyond that because I was never given notice from the last meeting, okay? Excuse I'm also... Me. Excuse me. Yep. You were given notice. It's in the letter that I sent you on April 3rd. You right. were told on November 6th to come to every single meeting between right. then and June. Yes, but we weren't given notice of the meeting date. Yes, you were given notice. At that date, at every meeting, you were supposed to attend. Okay. So, um, we have... Uh, we have voted uh, to cancel... Uh, uh, seasonal alcoholic restaurant license 09000043. Uh, you'll need to surrender that license to, um, well, Mary's no longer the clerk. But to whom should she surrender it? He surrender it? We'll have to write him a formal letter. He has five days from the letter to appeal to the ABCC. Okay. I don't know. I, it will have to be signed for you. Okay. All right. So you have five days from the date of this action to appeal for the date of receipt of the letter. I'm sorry, he has five days from the date of the receipt of the letter. Yes. Okay. It will be certified mailed. To appeal. So, um, you know, that, that, is, um, you know that, that is the decision on the license at 2628 Center Street. The same, some of the same uh, questions pertain to the license for the Old Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. And, um, I understand from the building commissioner that work is proceeding there, and that uh, the last time we uh, uh, addressed this issue, you said that that license would be should be operational uh, by by the toward the end of June. Mm -hmm. uh, There's delays the there that are outside of our control, and I'll have the building inspector also document whatever we need to document. But there's plenty of work that's going on there on an ongoing basis. There has been. So um, you're saying that it cannot be. Open operation. This no. license will also not be exercised by no, the June date. There, there, we've met um, in terms of the June date. It is unlikely based on everything that is going on there and some of the code changes that they're working through. There's an entire team there every day, and there has been since we've had the discussion. The building inspector's office has been there on a regular basis doing inspections. So we're going to need to put a formal request in for an extension of that date. There's ongoing work, and there is. You know, there is a date that we're hopefully going to be able to give you, but it's based on that work that's commencing. Okay. Um, we would like any update you can give us prior to the June meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the date of the June meeting? <coughs> fourth. Fourth. Mm -hmm. um, the June 4th meeting. Mm -hmm. um, we will address this. As you can see, we take the provisions of Section 77 seriously. And uh, we will, we will uh, be looking at that as well in regard to that license right. at our June meeting. So, um, you know, there yeah, has the building inspector's office given you updates? Um, he is not giving me a detailed update. He hasn't presumed to give me a date when he thought you could open. Right. But, um, but again, the license to be exercised 
needs to be open to public either for functions or for general right. traffic. Um, uh, and this was a function hall, so if you were open, began to exercise this license by having a function where the right. service of alcohol was provided. Right. Understanding that. Then this whole thing goes on. Sorry? I said you have to have a certificate of occupancy. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know where. Exactly and where you're at with I mean, that. They're, they're, they're doing as much as they can do every day. I mean, it's, it's, it, it is commencing and it's moving forward in a very good manner, but it's, it's taking time. Okay, and I believe that the uh, health department told me also that you had to apply for a food service establishment license for... We're not ready to apply for the church, you're saying? Yes. No, we're not ready to apply for that at this point because there's nothing to be able to, there's nothing to be able to look at yet. The construction right. is still, we're still ongoing. They inspect when the kitchen is completed, so... All of the rough is completed, but there's there's nothing for them to inspect it. But I will pull a permit uh, or pull a, a you know fill out an application and get it into them so they have that if that's you know if that's, if you they, they can't physically inspect it until I if you wish. Um, all right. Again, the June fourth meeting. Then we will discuss uh, the license for uh, uh, two two ninety eight. I can never remember two ninety eight Main Street. Um, that time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. for a new seasonal wine and malt restaurant license, uh, Mosaic Cafe. Rose manager, El Hafid Asab, 78 Sonic Street. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to recommend you delay this to next month. Apparently, Mr. Asab did not understand from me that he had to notify all of the listed abutters that I gave him, and the green cards had to be returned. So I do not believe this application Ready to be considered. Have you notified? Notified? Has, have the butters been notified? Yeah, yeah. So like the the one the next uh, close to mosaic, like 500 feet. Mm -hmm. But yeah, not from Springfield. That I told him like. I gave him a list yeah. of people yeah, so who had to be notified. Yeah. Have they been notified now? No, not yet. Not yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we will put this over to the next meeting, okay. and you have to notify them and okay. get the contacts. Okay. Sorry about that. <coughs> Thank you. Um, item number nine, application for charity wine license, Friends of Forbes Library, uh, for um, September 26. Hi. Hi. This for is the just record, a you little are. party. <laughs> 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 Nothing like the last one. Um, I, my name is Kate Doherty, and I'm a member of the board of the Friends of Forbes, and uh, I'm here to answer questions if you have any. It's just a charity wine pouring okay. You've done this before? Yes. Okay. This is under the same circumstances that we've done before? Yes. And you have don donations from um, licensed wholesalers or farmer wineries? Yes. Okay, sir. I see you have liability insurance in place. Yes, we do. And anything else? Mr. Chairman, that's the one that we have to send to the ABCC for approval. But I did notice that on your, um, the, it's the last page here. Um, your certificate for solicitation uh -huh. expires on May 15, 2015. And I okay. don't know if you remember, but last year when this happened, they okay. would not approve it until you submitted a current one. Okay. Um, no, I don't remember that last year. I believe it was Serena Smith. Yes, there? yes, she's the vice president. Right. So what I'm suggesting is that the commission approve this, but that um, we we apply. We apply. That you get, the, that you get the new solicit certificate okay. and okay. then we can send it in. Otherwise the ABCC is just going to send it back and say we need that. Okay. Sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. The next year um, 
we'll know ahead of time. Thank that's you for reminding me. That's the problem with the timing of it. Yeah. Your event's not till September, so right. you have plenty of time. Right. But if that, if we send it in yeah, with that yeah, I date, understand. It'll just right. keep They're going. just going to bounce it back. Okay. Thank you very much. They, they could still Thank approve you. it, but uh, we'll wait for that. I just have a very minor point. There's no time indicated here, and I just like to it's see It's usually in the early evenings. Okay. Um, like from <laughs> 6 to 8 or 5.30 to 8. Okay. Yeah. And is that an annual uh, thing that we should apply for, the solicitation? Yes, because that one expires the, the 50th of this month. Okay, mm -hmm. but um, I didn't realize, and I think maybe Serena didn't realize that we had to do it every year. Right. But thanks thanks for telling me. Thank you. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Sir? <Right. laughs> okay. We have to approve it. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, we may have other questions. From okay. The other I have Brian, do you have any questions, sir? I'll, I'll make a motion. a motion that we approve the application <clears throat> from the Friends of Forbes Library with no fee. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Application for short term wine and malt license. It's that time of year again, the Glasgow <laughs> Land Scottish Festival. Yes, sir. So, tell us again what you were doing. What are we doing? Yes, what, what, tell us about this event. Well, uh, and uh, the service of alcohol. Yeah. Other than the service of alcohol? No, no, no. And just tell us again uh, what, what, okay. how you were set up to serve alcohol. Right. We, we have a, a uh, we serve a beer from uh, Paper City at, uh, we have a pub, and we have a stage, entertainment stage, and it's um, fenced off with. Uh, uh, snow fence, and uh, it's at Little Park, and uh, the, the the beer is, and we also have been serving mead, which is okay. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> is, mead, is mead even mentioned in chapter number? Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a wine malt. Yeah, it's, it's a malt. Alcohol. It's a malt. <laughs> is it a malt beverage? Yeah, it's, it's not alcohol. It's not. Uh, I think we asked for last year, but we, we've done it. It was included. Yes. I'm sorry, this doesn't really matter to us. But it's, <laughs> all right. It's fermented honey, right? I mean, it's fermented honey? Something. Yes, it is. I'm sorry. Yeah. I know. I don't drink it. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'm not having any either. So I, I have one question. Do, does, the, uh, uh, per, uh, does the license require us to have uh, police on site, which we do, incidentally? It's not a condition of, okay. No, Be no, you, we would need to be satisfied that minors weren't being served, that you had control of the we, premises on which the, the alcohol was being served, that you had insurance certificate in case there's any beef uh, or any problem, and that sort of thing, but we don't require a uniform okay. policeman. The insurance certificate, uh, I don't have it yet because they're getting the quotes, but. Okay. Right, and uh, payment of the fee is also. And that as well, yes. Okay, um, any other questions on this? Okay. I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve the application <coughs> for the Glass Gallon Scottish Festival. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Okay, item number 11 application for transfer of license um, and change of location and new common victory license and new entertainment license. Convino LLC doing business as Convino, 150 Main Street, uh, Suite 1 in Thorns. Uh, current licensee, this is uh, Clips. And the proposed manager is Carolyn McDaniel. That's me. Okay, thank you. Can you tell us what you, uh, you know, uh, what you intend to do at this location? It's going to be a wine bar and restaurant. A um, bunch of different, probably, 50 wines by the glass eventually, probably not going to start with that, but uh, lots of wines by the glass uh, and also by the bottle. Um, and then small plates of food, mostly Mediterranean, Mediterranean American. Um. And uh, I note that you have uh, entertainment license applications, solo or small group acoustic music. It would be nice sometimes to have, you know, a little jazz something or, you know, it, it's not going to be, it's not going to be every day. It's going to be rare, probably. Okay. Um, 
The, uh, you don't have any hours or anything like that for the entertainment. You don't have anything, any real detail about it. Generally, when I'm, we issue know, an entertainment license, it, <laughs> it says, you know, you should be, you're authorized to have this following entertainment, you know, on these days and during these oh, hours. So, um, tell us what you would intend. I'm going to be open from probably three in the afternoon till last call. Um, and I would expect that entertainment would happen, well, it could happen any time during those, those hours, um, but it's, um, it would probably be, you know, after, after 8 o'clock um, in, in the evening and probably just a couple nights a week. Okay. And, um this is inside Thorns. Yes. It so is. it's uh, the old dynamite record space. Okay, uh, so the, you have the garage the downstairs would be open because the rest of Thorns is locked at night, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And we're working with Thorns to make sure that I since I'm going to be open long after they close, then mm -hmm. that they're all closed off so that right, right. There's um, that ice cream shop on the other end, right? Right, that's on, that's on the Old South Street right. side. Okay. So you would, have, um, okay, you would have the main entrance there and then you would have an egress and I, I assume that the right. building I, I will have my has own, done. I want my own entrance from, uh, from the plaza there mm -hmm. um, and then also there will be a way to get in from Thorns but that won't be available after the Thorns is closed. Have you had your uh, building permit yet, certificate of occupancy or anything like that? I haven't even begun construction. <laughs> okay. So um, you're looking for this uh, license well in advance of the rest of the Well, yeah, because it's a process. Um, you know, if you're a wine bar, you want to be able to serve sure. like, wine when you open. What is your target date for opening? Well, that's um, that. If all goes well, um, September 1st, that's a real wish, probably September 15th. Okay. Any questions? Yes, I, I, I have a couple of questions. Well, first of all, I don't know if this is a question for you or for who, but it says transfer of the license, that's from the clips, I assume, mm -hmm. and change of location. So that means to your location. To my location. location. Um, and the new common vicular license is because you'll be serving food. Um, okay, I just wanted to be clear about that. I would like to know a little bit about your experience in the wine and food service industry. I um, have been in the food industry in one way or another for almost 30 years. Um, I had a patisserie in the Rawhurst building in the late 80s, Sydney uh, Peace Cafe. Um, I'm a chef by training, uh, and I have cooked in restaurants, had my own restaurant. I've managed all kinds of more retail than restaurant, uh, retail food, um, um, and I have been a business consultant for food businesses uh, for 12, 15 years, um, based in New York. Um, I, was, I was here for a while, and I moved back to New York, and then I came back here, but I've been in every part of the food business except actual farming <laughs> um, for a long time. And how many people do you, do you have an idea of what the uh, capacity of this will be? Um, I think it would probably be 60 to 80 seats. Um, and, uh, and you know, probably 20 seats at the bar and, and 40 or 50 seats uh, in different kinds of seating in the restaurant. Um, And have you done the um, tips or serve safe training? I've, I've training done serve safe. Um, I think that's all the questions I have. <clears throat> um, I'll make a motion then. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I'd like to ask that you make the motion contingent upon uh, submission of further documentation. Ms. McDaniel is still uh, getting investors. And also on contingent upon her contacting the Board of Health, the Building Department, and the DPW because she is thinking of doing tables and chairs outdoors also. Okay. The um, 
Well, this wouldn't cover outdoor seating. Well, if we vote for licensed premises now, but since the, we usually wait for the for public works to sanction the outdoor thing, so right. you could come back for extension of premises okay. later on yeah. If, yeah. if we grant this license now. Okay. So I'm sorry, continue. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'll comment. Just continue. because continue. she's still um, okay. getting, we don't have all the documentation as yet. Okay, so. New but it would need a 16C. It will. Okay, I was going to ask that mm -hmm. actually. New investors, then uh, uh, Public Works, uh, Board of Health, Board of Health, Building Commissioner. Okay. Right. And Ms. McDaniel then, understands that when she has those documents, we could then submit if you approve it. Okay. We don't need a separate uh, inspection from the, from the fire department. That would happen after the transfer gets approved by ABCC. Then, um, okay, so we're waiting for anything else. Okay. She has some further documentation to provide before it could okay. seriously be sent in. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I'm aware that, you know, some, sometimes your investors just don't get their paperwork to you in time. Go ahead, so you have no, did you make the motion? No, no, I didn't. Yet. No, but did you have another question? But no, I was just going to say something about the entertainment license, but okay, I don't go even ahead. know. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I just think given the amount that remains to be documented and the fact that there's not a planned opening until the fall anyway, that we should wait on the entertainment license. That would be my preference. I have no objection. Brian? No objection. Uh, okay. Well, you know, you'll probably have to be back anyway. Yeah. One thing or another, so. uh, but you would like to have this transfer approved so that uh, you so can like proceed. Exactly. I underst we understand your business uh, reasons for having to do that. So, uh, And the common victim of license is, you know, again, the service of food. If you were here for our discussion, <laughs> is contingent upon yeah. license um, from the board of health. So. Well, it was never a question with me. I come, I come to wine from food. So, I was always going to make food. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, and I'll serve, serve wine with that. Right. Well, unless there's any further questions for Ms. McDaniel, let me just, um, I'll make the motion here. Um, contingent upon receipt of further documentation, including but not limited to uh, information about your new investors, uh, the necessary uh, certificates from the Board of Public Works and the Building Commissioner, and from the Department of Health, the Board of Health, um, I move that we approve this application for transfer of this annual wine and malt restaurant change location from the Clips at 186 Main Street to uh, Convino at, um, at in the basement of Thorns. And that be killer. Yeah, yeah. It's in the and yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Um, Sorry. All right. Let me put that motion in advance <laughs> now. Uh, actually, let, let me get a second on it. Okay, all right, let me, let, me, let me stop right there. Let me go to, uh, can I have a 16C motion? I make a motion that this would not interfere with any church or school within whatever it is that it's supposed to be. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. The form is in the packet for you to sign. Returning then um, to the, um, all of the Senate? Or just one of us? You. Um, then returning to the motion I made, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you. So you have a checklist from the area of the stuff yep. that you need. Yeah. And I, again, um, Cindy will be our new clerk, so you will so be I'll dealing be seeing with, you. with Cindy okay. <laughs> from here on out. So. Okay. Great. Thank you. I'm sorry, Brian, you came late. Did you meet Cindy? Hi, Brian. Hi. How are you? This is Cindy Murphy. Mary is not actually our clerk today. Mary is facilitating the meeting in the terms of some legal gobbledygook she read at this very start. But she is very dis full disclosure. But Cindy will be starting and uh, she'll be getting so I offer, you know, we would provide whatever resource we need to. Stephanie is stepping down from the board. There'll be a new commissioner on next month, but probably oh, I will be saying very well at the end. Right. Okay. So, um, Can you have that packet? Yeah, yeah, I'm just looking uh, at right now. I'm just kind of looking at it. I just want to look at it. Uh, um, <coughs>
Okay. Um, all right. Application for short term wine and malt licenses for the Academy of Music. Uh, we have Friday, June 6th, Thursday, June 19th, and Friday, June 20th, and Saturday, June 21st. Fee waiver has been requested. Um, uh, you have uh, three events, four nights. Anything different about your service of alcohol from your no, customary? No, uh, this is just um, our typical pre-show and intermission um, beer and wine service. Okay. Um, one of these events is uh, the same we did last year, Django in June. It's a repeat one we had a license for last year. The other two are new. And this is the real art card. It is. <laughs> it's very exciting. And Allison, is this the real Roger in the It is, from the birds, yes. Well, it's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, any questions? Any questions? Okay. Uh, I'll take a motion with a fee waiver. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve these applications with a fee waiver for short term and more licensing. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, application for short-term all-alcoholic licenses, trustees of Smith College, four-year alumni reunions, uh, May 15, 16, 17, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. Uh, I do not have to accuse myself anymore from these. So oh, okay. I will ask you. Hi, I'm Kathy Z, the Director of Dining Services, as we've done in the past, to, to provide services for social hours and wine with dinner for tour alums. Um, and they each like their own space on campus, so we've been put across the 17 over the three days. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and uh, 17 events in total. Right. Over, so they would be over six days. Three, the commencement weekend, that's the 15th, 16th, mm -hmm. 17th, and then the following weekend that they have the other 1,000 alums come back for reunion. Okay. three. Nights again, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And uh, there has been no problems ever reported to us on any of these events. But right, in the past, no. Necessary um, uh, steps so that the minors are right, served. And served so safe so so. Right, there's okay. no minors. Babies in carriages sometimes, but they're not what I'm serving. Okay. Yes. Um, then, um, does anyone have any questions? I do not have any questions. Right. I'll make a motion that we approve the application for the short term all alcohol licenses for Smith College. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thanks, Mary, and good luck, Cindy. You don't need Thank you. Good luck. Okay, okay. Thank you. Um, our next item is um, application for farm winery. Look to license to sell farmers markets and agricultural events. Uh, Massachusetts Farm Wineries and Growers Association, Inc. And you have a number of participating wineries, and you want to have this event at the Three County Fairgrounds on Sunday, June 8th, uh, only from 1 to 6, correct? There's actually a correction. Um, the list of wineries that are listed on the agenda is slightly modified. Okay. There's 12 participating wineries. And we're proposing a, a split session format. We came before you last year for this event. Um, and what we would like to do this year is have one session from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. and allow us a couple hours to flip the facility over and have a second session from 4 to 7 p.m. Hmm. Basically, what is we, the, what we is split the, the group up that what, way. What is the application? I don't have the application. There are a couple of documents that are missing uh, from the application package. The Department of Ag Resources um, is reviewing um, the event and uh, swapped a few emails with that staff person today, so we expect those approval letters will be forthcoming. There's also a couple of insurance certificates, which I've included uh, certificates of liability mm -hmm. insurance, listing the city of Northampton as the additionally insured for each winery that's participating. Mm -hmm. um, there's three of them that are outstanding. One arrived via email while I was sitting here waiting. So, so some of the wineries need both the ag certification and the yes, insurance. Sir. Okay. Um, we need this application amended to show the change of 
Can we grant it? And the application the itself does list the correct hours. Oh, it does. Okay. Yes, I th it, it was when I had contacted Mary okay. to ask to be included on the agenda. Oh, I see. I okay. didn't specify that we had split our hours out. Okay. So you're saying uh, 11 to 2. And then 4 to 7. 4 to 7. Okay. And um, you've done this before, haven't you? I'm sorry. I didn't have you identify yourself. For the I'm record. Kim Lafleur with the Mass Farm Winery and Growers Association. Okay, and um, you've done this event before. Yes, Fair last rest. year was our first time. That's right. Mm -hmm. okay. Just describe the setup briefly. Um, the wineries are a representative of the farm wineries from around Massachusetts. Um, this is a sampling event um, where they're given an opportunity to sample up to four wines um, from each of the participating wineries if they find wine that they enjoy, they're able to purchase that by the bottle for off-premise consumption. We'll invite some food and craft vendors as well uh, to round out the day. Um, but it, it is a, a farmer's market style event focused on wine. Okay. Uh, questions, Brian? Um, do you have entertainment there as well? Um, we're not going to do live entertainment this year. We're going to use um, piped music. And we will, um, as we did last year, uh, make sure that we have um, police and fire detail as well. Second. I'll make a motion that we approve the application for the <coughs> form warning of the liquor license. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so uh, those additional uh, ag certifications mm -hmm. and insurance certificates. Who should I send them to? You can send them to me directly to you. Mm -hmm. Electronic, would you like a hard copy? Oh, I'll try to be fine. Okay. And uh, the insurance certificates as well. Yes. Okay. I expect the MDOT paperwork in um, any day, and then there'll right. be just a few separate emails for the insurance. Great. Right. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, Item number 15, application for farm winery liquor license, sell farmers markets and agricultural events. Uh, Car Cider House, uh, you want to sell from the Hampton Tuesday Farmers Market. Um, Hi, Thorns. Hi, could you identify yourself for the record? Yes, I'm Nicole Blum, uh, co-owner of Car Cider House. Okay, and um, have, you, have you served? Have yeah, we did, we did the same market last season, so this will be coming back. Okay, and I see you have your MDR served. Yeah, everything should here. be in order, right, Mary? It's in order, I'm pretty sure of yes. I don't have your actual MDAR application. They did, you don't have the, the approval from them? You have the approval. I have to also have you the You have to have the whole thing? Mm -hmm. Okay. A okay. copy of it. Yeah. Send that to you. Mm -hmm. You can send it to me by email. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are there questions? No, I don't have any questions. I'll make a motion that we approve the application pending receipt of the required documentation. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right, thanks. I sent you a check that way. There's a check on there. There is a check on there. Okay, so you just need the actual yeah. application. I'll get that to you tomorrow night. I thanks. can mail you the license. Okay, that's great. Thanks. Are you intending to be at next Tuesday? I, yeah, we wanted to go to next Tuesday if we could, so I'll make sure you okay. get it Okay, um, if you just email me the MDAR application. Uh -huh. Um, I can make sure that I make the license and have it at the mayor's office for you. Okay. 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 All right, that's um, great. Probably by Friday. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you. Last but not least. <laughs> Item number 16, application for short-term wine and malt license. Michael Curtin, VFW Post, for your second annual pig roast. And um, you also get the commendation for patience. My name is Tom Pease. I live at 130 Spring Street in Florence, and I am the commander of the VFW Post 8006. And I'm here to get the license again for our second annual pig roast on July the 26th from noon until 10, but it won't go to 10 because the mosquitoes move in about 8.30. So learn from experience. I remember you did this last year. Yeah, yeah. very successful. Um, since this is a parking lot, uh, remind us again how you uh, find control access to the premises. We, we set up a tent in the middle of the parking lot. Uh, that's where the food was served. The, the pig was 
off the corner of our property. We rented uh, some property next door from a roofing fellow, I forget his name, he's a younger, but anyhow, we put we can put about 30 cars in there. We had no cars on the street. And the Civic Center and um, Lily Library allow us to park there also. So it was just a crosswalk and people were crossing back and forth. But the service alcohol would just be in your parking lot? There just in the parking lot, yeah. Yep. And I see we have the uh, uh, insurance certificate. We just need a, the fee. Any questions? No. No, no questions. Oh, yeah, okay. Kathy is going to be with me today, but she turned up sick this morning, so I'll have her drop and check off tomorrow. Okay. okay. Um, if she could bring it to the mayor's office, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah. Um, will both you and Kathy be there at this thing for the whole, oh, yeah. the whole show? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll be cooking. I'll be okay. uh, dancing and cooking right. or whatever. Right. If there's no questions, then I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the, uh, the FW's application. I'll, I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Item 17, approval minutes of March 3rd and April 2nd. If we look at these uh, minutes, and I have no changes, anyone else? No, nope, I have no changes. I can't speak to March 3rd since I wasn't here, but I read the April 2nd uh, minutes. I'll take a motion to approve the minutes. Uh, second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. okay, any new business? We have here from the city of Northampton uh, a certificate of special recognition, Lori Stephanie Lund, for dedicated service to the License Commission and to Northampton thank you. residents. I will miss you guys. I, I think it would be appropriate to take you out for a drink. Absolutely. <laughs> Several drinks. <laughs> we could go to that one by the green room. Yeah. <laughs> <Great. laughs> oh darn. It's a lot seems to be close. Um, no, thank you, Stephanie. Well, um, thank you. It's been, came on, it's, it's really actually, been enjoyable. When I came on, um, you were here at Chris yes. Casal. Right. So this was 12 years ago? Quite a while. Uh, and then um, Brad came on. Yeah. He was here for a while. And the new show. So, You're the new boy on the block. I am. I am. So, um, but no, no, it's, it's been great. Having a lawyer around is always helpful for me. Preferably two <laughs> or three. So, no, but thanks. Okay, well, thank you. Yeah. Any other new business? It's a pleasure. Any other? Oh, and. Right. All right. Do um, you want to adjourn first so we can shut off the cameras? And the yes, yes. Uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Yep. Oh, sorry. All, all, all in favor? Aye. Aye.